Okay, let's talk about the top three things you need to know about algebra. So this is coming from the perspective, um, my own personal perspective as a math teacher, teaching many, many years. Of course, I've taught algebra, um, various levels of mathematics. But um, I like to kind of think of the three main things about uh, algebra. If you're new to it or if you're going to take it or if you're taking it, um, these are, I think, three great ways to kind of think about the subject. Uh, before we get uh, going into the video, if you're new to my channel and you're looking for additional math help, I hope you consider subscribing. If you do, uh, hit that uh, bell notification. And I offer full and complete uh, math courses on a, a variety of different uh, uh, subjects. So if you're interested in that, I'll leave a uh, various links to my Tampa Class Math Academy in a description. Uh, of the video. But with that being said, let's get into the top three things you need to know about algebra. All right, so the first one is variables, okay? This is what really distinguishes algebra from arithmetic. So in arithmetic, you had, let's say, 2 plus 3, and we know that's equal to 5. So this is arithmetic you're working with numbers and you have operations, right? So a number operation is like adding or subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. So in algebra, what we do is we use variables. So for example, instead of 2 plus 3 equals 5, we might have 2 plus x is equal to 5. So the main idea of a variable in algebra, it is a placeholder for a number. So a variable, whether it be x, so here are some common examples of variables in algebra. And by the way, a, a variable can be any symbol, okay? We oftentimes use letters. So for example, we have x, y, z, a, B, C, etc. These are all very common variables, but other variables in algebra could even be the, um, this symbol, pi. Okay, so that actually represents the number, right? So most of you might be familiar with the the uh, value of pi, which is approximately 3.14. There's all kinds of symbols that we can use in algebra, and it gets kind of fancy. You know, you can get into all types of different crazy symbols, etc. But the main idea is to, is to know, is to, uh, to realize that th these variables, these symbols, whether they be letters or something else, just represent a number. So if I look at this first statement here, 2 plus 3 equals 5, okay, that makes sense to most of us, <laughs> hopefully all of us. The, this uh, symbol down beneath here, or this statement down here is, 2 plus x equals 5, but x is some number. So you could kind of read this as 2 plus what number is equal to 5? So if I asked it, if I asked you that question, 2 plus what number is equal to 5, you would you know, think about it for a second. Well, you say, oh, okay, I think 3, right? Yeah, 2 plus 3 is equal to 5. So again, the big thing, the big, big thing about algebra when you that distinguishes itself from arithmetic is the use of variables, okay? So let's move on to our second uh, big thing about algebra, and that is equations. So one of the big things that you learn in algebra is how to solve equations. So for example, here I have in a simple equation, let's so kind of look at this again, use this uh, example, 2 plus x is equal to 5. Okay, so this is a simple equation, right? So what we're, we're, we're trying to do is to find the value of, of what th that variable is, okay? So this variable is some number. So it's some number. We know it represents some number, some value, okay? What number? Well, that's the name of the game, okay? So it's some number. Well, what number? Well, that's the whole objective of of uh, solving equations in algebra, okay? The basic goal or task is, hey, look, you're making a statement that this is true, okay? If this is true, this equation, if this is true, well, then this particular variable here has to um, uh, 
be assigned some value in order to make this true. So 2 plus what number is equal to 5? Well, we know that that is 3. So in this case, if I was to solve this equation, x is equal to 3. Why? Because when I plug that in, and I, for x, when I remove the x and plug 3 in, because we're saying x is equal to 3, what I'm saying here is that x is the same as 3. So if I see an x, I could be like, ah, leave it as x, or I could plug in 3 because they're one of the same, okay? So solving equations in algebra is essential, okay? And you, this is one of the core skills that you really need to know um, that's focused on in algebra. Now, one of the things that we can kind of look at or think of as equations when we start learning them in algebra, let's kind of go back here. 2 plus x is equal to 3 is to... Um, use the the model of a teeter-totter. So hopefully, um, I know we're in the day and age of video games and been in that for some time, but some of you older folks, and hopefully they still exist, I don't see them uh, much anymore, uh, a teeter-totter, right? So you, one person would get on this end of the teeter-totter and another person would get on this end and you kind of swing back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Yeah, it's actually very fun until one person gets off abruptly and then it kind of hurts. <laughs> and anyways, that's deviating from our topic. But a teeter-totter is is basically it's it's teetering on a fulcrum. Okay, so basically it's balanced in the center. So if I have this side, if some who, let's say somebody weighs a hundred pounds and they're on the left hand side, and somebody weighs a hundred pounds on the right hand side, well then this teeter-totter is going to be in balance, right? It's going to be. Uh, just perfectly level and everything else. But as soon as this side becomes weighs more, this goes down, right? And then this goes up. And you can kind of get the idea. It's not too difficult, you know, visually to kind of see that, hopefully. But using a model or the idea of a teeter-totter for equations is excellent in uh, for algebra, okay? So what we're trying to do is balance the scale. So what we're looking at in algebra or what we need to always keep in mind is that the equation symbol is kind of like where the, the, the fulcrum is, the little point here on a teeter-totter, okay? Everything to the left, right, all the value, the, the sum total value of the left-hand side of the, that equation symbol is going to be exactly equal to everything on the right-hand side, okay? So our job when we solve equations to figure out what number this x or whatever other variables have to be in order to keep this equation in balance all right that's a main 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 uh, concept in terms of solving equations in algebra now let's just talk about um let me kind of erase this here for a second Let's talk about some of the uh, equations that you learn how to solve in algebra. So this is a real basic, basic example of something we call just a linear equation. All right, just a basic linear equation. But as you progress and you learn more about algebra, there's different type of equations. We could have things like this, x squared minus 2x plus 1 equals 0. So this is still an equation because it has the equal symbol in it. And the name of the game is still the same thing, like, hey, let's figure out what value of x uh, such that when we plug it in, it makes this statement, okay, uh, true, okay? This is a quadratic equation, and the way we solve a quadratic equation is different than the way we solve this type of equation, but the, the concepts are still the same. Then we have other things called, like, say, systems of equations. Now we start messing around with two variables here, okay? Uh, and then you can have you, the, the type of equations can get progressively a little more complex, et cetera. And we study those, you know, um, uh, like in one chapter at a time. You know, if you're taking a traditional algebra course, you have quadratic equations, systems of equations, rational equations. But just notice I'm using the word equation over and over again. And uh, and I'm specifically, you know, we're specifically using the word equations to describe that because it's still the same goal to figure out what value of the variables, what numbers, um, uh, the values of the variables that, that make that statement true. OK, that is a huge skill set that you need to learn in algebra. All right, let's move on to our last thing that you need to know about algebra 
and this is graphs, okay? Now, of course, this is all my opinion, but I think this is where I'm really focusing on how, how algebra um, kind of distinguishes itself um, uh, from like arithmetic. So if you're coming out of, let's say, elementary school or, or middle school mathematics and you start progressively getting into more and more algebra, one of the things you're going to start really dealing with uh, a lot more is graphs, okay? And um, this this is hugely important because once you start learning about graphs, you're going to base they're going to be a part of your mathematics uh, journey from this point forward. So let's uh, let me go to erase this actually here. Let's talk about some of the things that you need to know about graphs. Well, graphs, the biggest thing you start learning about in algebra is beyond after you learn something about what we call a number line you'll start learning about the xy plane, okay? And the idea is that we can actually look at equations and other things graphically speaking, okay? So we want to take a look at things maybe like this, okay, which is an equation, but this equation also represents something visually, it represents a line, okay? So when we look at things like this, okay, when we take a a variable expression and we look at it uh, graphically, then we can actually start analyzing um, uh, what's going on better, okay? Because a lot of equations, okay, uh, can represent something in real life. It could be a real life model. And this is where the application of algebra really becomes something, um, you know, critically important, okay? That's like, well, why are we learning this math anyways? Well, because it, it, you can apply it to real life problems. So we can have a an algebraic equation represents something that's occurring in, in uh, middle life, right? Maybe this is years, all right? Let's say this graph here is years. As years go out, maybe what's going on is the population of a city is increasing, right? So as the years continue to, to go out, population's increasing. So this is a particular type of graph. This is just a basic linear graph, but you need to know how to interpret and actually um, graph of certain what we call functions. And that's a huge uh, topic that it kind of corresponds with graphs as well. But I don't want to get into that because I want to keep this kind of simple. But these aren't the only type of graphs you start learning in algebra. You'll start learning th um, about graphs like parabolas, which are the graphs of quadratic um, functions or equations. And as you progress, you'll start learning, you know, different type of graphs uh, of a polynomials, et cetera. So you really start getting heavy duty on the, st uh, the study of graphs. But, but remember, the graphs, e each graph has a, uh, an associated equation or function that goes along with it. Okay, I don't want to get too technical here, but just rem remember... We're taking something that has an equation or some other representation uh, with variables, and we're when we're looking at it graphically, okay? Because graphs have a tremendous amount of value. So this is really, really a big part of algebra and beyond. But you really start seeing it in there. So the main things that you're going to, the top three things when you start really getting to the um, uh, study of algebra again are going to be hey, you're going to have to get comfortable with variables and just keep in mind that they represent numbers. The second thing is you're going to have to know how to solve a, a wide variety of different type of equations, okay? But remember, it's still the, the goal of solving the equation is still the same. You're looking for the value of those variables such that it makes the left-hand side of the equation equal to the right-hand side. And the last thing is looking at graphical models of equations and other things, other algebraic type of expressions, so we can study what's going on visually. So these are big three central things about algebra, and I think we'll just kind of leave it at that, okay? Just kind of a quick overview. Again, that's, um, you know, I want to just uh, kind of remind you, I do a ton of videos. So if you like my teaching style, the way I explain things, you know, I, I literally have hundreds of videos on my channel. So hopefully, you know, you'll consider becoming a subscriber. Make sure you hit that bell notification. I'm, I'm doing videos every week. At least I try to. Um, again, if you're interested in my free courses, I'll leave a description um, uh, in my, or my full math courses, excuse me. I'll leave a description in uh, uh, the uh, 
of the video. And of course, if you enjoyed this uh, um, explanation, you know, definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. I, I do try to read as many of the comments. I do get a lot of comments and I um, um, try to read as many as I can. And, and uh, you know, it lets me know how I'm doing and gives me um, a sense of um, ideas on future videos that I can make for you. But with that being said, I definitely appreciate your time. I hope you got something valuable out of the video and uh, have a great day.